hello and welcome to a continuing live coding series on creating a well-being app in JavaScript. We're working on the uh, Jerry Life application. It's a well-being instrument for caregivers to coordinate um, well-being activities in elder care homes. Basically, the caregivers are responsible for ensuring that all the residents have the opportunity to go outside, enjoy music and art, have social activities and cultural activities. And in larger care homes, it's a little bit easy for some of the residents to kind of slip through the cracks for the for them to kind of be, become invisible in, a, uh, in the hustle and bustle of daily and weekly activities. So what we've done is develop this tool that makes it visible who's been active recently, uh, what their maybe emotional state is, uh, the overall trends in the homes, whether or not most of the residents are active or semi-active or, or inactive. Uh, each resident and what kind of activities they've been doing lately. <coughs> Excuse me. So basically, this project has a lot of data visualizations. Um, the particular task I'm working on is in involving visualizations. We're expanding the user base and we realize that as you get more residents in the system um, in the nurses who are only responsible for well, let's say 15 of, of 500 residents uh, might feel a little bit overwhelmed uh, seeing all the residents for which they're not responsible <clears throat> so the task here and it's come along pretty far is to assign users to groups and then to kind of distill or uh, uh, reduce the amount of information the user see to just what's relevant. Okay, so uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, I'd be glad to have to hear any or read any comments or questions you have about the project and advice you might have for my coding style or. Uh, the direction of the project or anything like that. If you're interested in getting involved, we're open source on GitHub. You can uh, see the GitHub link in the footer. And we've got you know a number of tasks, uh, a lot of which are low-hanging fruit. So we, we could use some help on a few of these. And I'd glad, be glad to get you set up uh, with the development environment. So we're using Meteor.js. And I'm on my branch, so let's just go ahead and run Meteor. It's gonna build the app. Oh, I have to go to the app directory, see the app. <clears throat> While I build, let's grab a little bit of tea. Oh, get some milk, be right back. Okay, so it looks like our app is launched. Let's hop over there real quick. The data is going to be a little bit stale. So we'll need to generate some dummy data. But let's take a look at the homes page. Ah, oh, I don't have any dummy data. Okay. So we'll split the panel. Go to the Meteor shell, and then it's uh, there's a function here, or method, Meteor method. It's called create mock data. Oh boy, there's some errors there. Now just whoops, sorry, maximize over here. Just Oh, it already exists. So somehow our app state has gotten a little bit corrupted since the last time I worked on it. So apparently we don't have any homes. Oh, you know what I think the problem is. Uh, I'm 
logged in as a user who doesn't have access to any homes. There we go. All right, I hope I didn't break too much. Can't really delete homes, so I'm gonna have to ignore that duplication right there. So yeah, that user, I didn't double check it. Well, it was new user and they're not assigned to any groups, so they didn't see anything on the homes page, which was as it uh, designed, so it was working good. Okay, I see I uh, got one viewer in uh, Twitch. If you're uh, interested in uh, or have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to let me know in the chat. I'm keeping my uh, eye on the chat over here. I've got it on my second monitor, so I'll try to respond pretty promptly. Okay, so the deal is to go to it this way from the home. We're all in the red, and I don't like that, so let's clear this meteor call, create mock activities. Just had a migration or in the work in progress. I'm going to check one thing for this. Um, packages, well being mock data. JS. Doesn't look like it's taken the departed into account. Where's my symbol browser? Green mock chair. All right, good to go. All right, so let's dig into the task. Oops. This should be looking better now. Yeah, so now we have homes with residents and lots of recent activities. Um, pretty buddy, much everybody's moderately active in this home. Um, diversity of activities going on, going outside, doing art, having cultural activities, a lot of outside activities. Cool. And mostly um, sort of volunteers. So we saw that when I view the homepage as a, an anonymous, or not anonymous, I'm sorry, um, a user without any groups, we didn't see any homes. Let me log back out in as that, as that uh, test user. Oh, no, sorry, it's a new user. That's right, new user. All right, so yeah, they have been assigned to own Nella, so they see North, North Rachel Land, but none, none of the other homes. Now, the other thing I need to work on, so there's a lot of residents here. <clears throat> Man, I have to reduce this a little bit. Uh, oh, well, actually, when I go to the home page and I add an activity, I should only see the homes to which I'm assigned. So I'm clearly seeing more homes uh, that I'm assigned, and that's a little confusing. Now, from here, you can you can search for a specific resident. That helps a little bit, but yeah, we just we're gonna filter that down, and then similarly on the residents page, if I view here, uh, I'm seeing residents for all the homes essentially. Includes departed, so I have to figure out how that's working. There's this other pull request open here. <coughs> Removing the departed field from the residence schema, so I just want to make sure we're not going to overlook that. OK, 
Okay, cool. All right, see, there's another viewer on Twitch. Welcome to the channel. If you've got any questions or comments, I'm watching the chat over there, so I'll try to respond pretty quick. Um, at some point, I'm going to install this. Well, I've installed this little code Twitch highlighter extension that allows people in the chat room here to highlight code, but I haven't figured out really how to get it working quite yet. I'll enable it. It says it's connected. There's only one viewer. I don't know how it works really. Twitch highlighter. So it looks like somebody in the chat can say line seven or line 11. So let me open a file here. Let's say line seven. Yeah, it doesn't seem to work. Blast. Okay, that'll be pretty cool though if we can get that going on. It gives people in chat a way to participate. I do have a Twitch account and logged in. I get a token. Maybe that's the step I haven't done. So let's go ahead over to this add activity form in the client. I'll start on the outside and work my way in activities form. And just look at the template first. So essentially it's an auto form. So it does a lot of the HTML for me. And you just kind of specify the fields and some kind of validation or other metadata. Uh, and you can pass in a, an existing value. So it generates the label and the, well, actually in this case, it's not generating the label. I'm gonna take that back. There's another uh, one that, another of these template helpers that generates the label. This just generates the form fields and handles the submission and everything like that. So this field input has, takes some options. These resident select options come from the template. It's a template helper. So let's find that. Form type, resident select options, select options. And it's a little bit complex, but I think it's because I'm essentially mapping these on the client side. So let's see, here's the first place I need to start is check here. So I'm subscribing to all homes, so that's not going to be useful. So I need a subscription that says current user homes. And then I need a way to filter down residencies to those that a user, the current user can see. So let me just mock this out real quick. I think JavaScript is current. User, it's a ball. Yeah, so essentially just replacing all current residents, current user. Visible residence, getting really verbose. <laughs> I can say user visible. It's gonna be current user though. Cause I wanna pass in a user ID. This will be current user visible resident sees. 
So there's a difference between a resident and a residency. A resident is a person who has a residency in a home. Uh, these people can move in and out of the homes. Uh, they can leave for various reasons. Uh, they may or may not stay in the system. There's, you know. So we had to kind of separate them out, the person from the residency. We learned, and this should be all current user visible homes. Uh, activity types and roles are used here because let's add an activity. So we're going to select the activity types. So we just need to subscribe to those and the roles and basically select the facilitator of the activity. Okay, so once we've got these subscriptions in place, I believe this is going to kind of work as it is, um, as it is written. Because this homes find method will only find the homes that have been subscribed. So I won't need much else there. And this residency is fine, should also be limited to the, to the subscription, unless there's another subscription polluting the page. Current user, visible. These should be active residencies. Current user, visible, active residencies. Because we're not necessarily going to be adding activities for residents who no longer live there. You're only really supposed to add activities in the past week. So, so that we get timely information about the, the home. So let's see. Current user visible residence. And the homes is just used to group the residents. So we have to subscribe to all these to get the data in the client in order to render the chart. Sorry, render the um, select widget with you know the proper labels. This is a home. These are residents. I'm just wondering if I can. We have this plugin, media plugin called a. Uh, it's like a composite publication. <laughs> Excuse me, publish, composite. So let's hop over to here, to the server side and take a look at these publications now. This is how we get data to the client. I'm trying to remember, I don't need the outline for a minute. Where I've used a composite. There we go, resident composite, resident homes composite. I might be able to do an activity form composite. Or wait, I can combine these two. On the residence page, we have this same thing where it's just the residence and home. So if I say, well, it's separate. And this may or may not include departed. So they're going to be different. The active residencies are meaning not departed. I don't know if I can share the code. I think there'll be some underlying methods I might be able to share for getting the, the user groups and things like that. I may have already written them. All right, well, let's just take a look at uh, what a composite publication will would look like. So, and I'm also wondering, Meteor Publish Composite.
So this has not been updated. Well, August 16, 2018. I'll probably just write these as individual publications. Hmm, darn. I wish Meteor would kind of have taken some of this stuff into the core, like schemas and this published composite was really nice idea, really useful. It's kind of what uh, GraphQL is doing though, so I suppose that's why the MDG went on with that. Okay, so that's where I'm at. These will be separate. Current user visible residents. So let's see. Well, let's start with current, current user visible homes because that's the closest. The way this permission system works and the way our data are organized is that homes are added to groups and a user permission exists at the level of the group. So when I'm added this user, when I added this user, um, the new user to own Nella, that means they inherit the ability to see all these homes. So I think if I work my way from here, because inside of homes are residents, and so by getting the groups that a user is subscribed to, um, I will be close to homes and getting those homes, I will be close to it residencies and getting those residencies I will be close to residents so publications current visible homes so we've got generic publications for all homes viewing a single home like when I'm at this home page we we'll use that and homes belonging to group Now this is essentially what I want to do. So let's go to user visible homes. Here I'm using double quotes. It's a little bit messy. And ES Lens is warning me about some stuff. But what? Well, I thought Prettier would have some sensible defaults there. Okay, so anyways, if you define a publication, second argument is a function. Oh, okay. Okay, so nothing broke on the activity form. At this point, I just have added in some commented out stuff. This is there. This is available now. I can comment it, uncomment it, and rerun it. Check my console. Oh yeah. So. 
so wow I don't remember I'll have to clean that up I remember having that console that console message in there objective secrets huh that's funny that I got a duplicate but anyway that was that's a it's a function so yeah the, there's a server console on the client console uh, on the server in the server code which is where we are server publications uh, this stuff is going to output down here so it looks like meter user ID is a, uh, a function which I just got a reference to there we go so yeah that user ID works great step one looks good now let's take a quick ender at the permissions so that's uh, a collection uh, collections are where we store our data um, collections name is what are these permissions that's in the wrong folder I guess there All right, so I defined it in the wrong place. Wait, that was easy to fix. What is this? I think this is old file I can clean up just while I'm here. So both is code that's shared between both client and server. Let me commit a few of these things. All right, so I'm not gonna commit these yet. They're work in progress. Take a look at the permission schema. All right, so it just consists of two things, a user ID and a group ID. So this is the user ID we already have here. So let's go ahead and get uh, const user uh, permissions. So since we're using the same, I believe, uh, user ID in both places, we'll just destructure that and then fetch those. Well, actually, and then what I'm wanting to do is map. I'm gonna separate this out, I don't want to get it too funky. check
All right, so that user belongs to one group. Okay. Which is correct, I see on the groups, on the homes page, only one group. All right, I still see there are two uh, viewers in chat. Feel free to leave me a message, a comment, or question about the code or any other things mostly related to development. Uh, I'm willing to discuss uh, any development topics that are of concern or interest to you. So now we've got the user groups. So we're one step closer now. Our, our goal is to get to homes. has a group ID. And Mongo has a query operator. I think it's in. Fields in. I think this is going to work like this. And I should probably convert all of this to a method. But let me just try it out here. <clears throat> so home's group ID is we use a Mongo operator, I think it's in uh, user group oh got off my screen. Sometimes those things are helpful. But sometimes they're just annoying. And then we want to console log is. I haven't figured out yet how to debug this. Uh, that would be the best thing if I could figure out how to debug meter apps. But right now I'm just running it in the shell, so I'm happy with that. And this should be a lot more. But it does. Oh, and need a fetch. So by default, find will give us a Mongo cursor and those cursors are pretty interesting that they're reactive when you have a query essentially a, a Mongo query and any document is modified that sort of matches that query that would be returned by that query um, it will reactively be kind of broadcast to all um, kind of subscribers everybody who's on this more or less topic And what we want to do is now take that cursor and grab the documents and then print them out here. There they are. Good. I'm going to wrap this up. Yet, hmm, let me think about this. The need is current user. So meet your methods, and I'm probably going to need to port these out from being regular 
uh, meter methods just to be regular methods, but anyway, they take any other arguments are passed after the method name. All right, so boom, this will fail because it can't find that method. So let's go get user visible homes method. Get user visible homes. We'll be on a server. It's a method for homes. Get the current user can access home. Let's do these alphabetically, I think. I hope. So we should be down here. And yeah, these are getting a little bit complex. space user ID and then this will just return ah I like that nice and simple everything's cool all right so this should now work the same and uh, yeah, because it's calling that server method. So boom. Okay, so then we can swap this current user visible homes. Now that'll actually break something if I save it. So let me just undo that. Current user visible active residencies. So I don't want to use the word current here too much. Current residencies means people who haven't moved out. So it's active. Current user visible current residencies is. <coughs> well. I like the word active. Current user visible active residencies. Let's roll over there. Or anything how much work I should do in this publication versus a method I think mo most of the work should be done in a method and a little bit of the work in the publication the publication should focus just on fetching the data whereas methods can just can focus on getting an array of uh, document IDs and things like that <laughs> kind of winging it as I go but yeah let's try that Kind of like a UI component would be responsible for rendering, but um, a server endpoint would be responsible for preparing the data.
for rendering and I usually in the UI components only have logic to sort of transform data that's relevant right to the render. So you no know, like aggregation at that point. It should already be done on the server. Current user visible activities. Let's do it. So this since it's gonna return residencies goes in the residencies. That's right. One of the reasons that the um, resident, these publications might do a little bit more uh, work is that this is a reactive context. So if something in here changes that's from a reactive data source, uh, like a different user ID for whatever reason. Well, let me think here for a second. Yeah, I, uh, this might be reactive, but more specifically, or I don't know, more specifically, but um, the residencies that a, mem a user is part of those change or the groups users are a member of those change those can reactively update and rerun this publication I think so that's pretty powerful and I think I don't know this is an intuition of mine but uh, I think a lot of uh, people in the media community kind of tore it apart uh, this was one of the most like uh, sort of innovative things that you could have these reactive server-side functions that could just send data to the clients um, you know based on any kind of changes in the data from multiple collections and I think for various reasons people you know kind of a couple of things one is found probably ways that that wasn't efficient or wasn't secure but also I think there's a tendency to be like the biggest fish in the small pond or what so to speak so there's a lot of like just puffing and kind of things that people have to demonstrate that they're one of the more intelligent people in the community and kind of that they know better than the core developers that this is the wrong way and this is the right way and my way is the right way type of stuff and I think just you know ends up kind of losing sight of the original picture which was around a really simple developer experience and around having end-to-end -end reactivity and then I don't know just people kind of moved on I think to a large extent as well they're not really meteors not quite as popular now although it had so many stars it had surpassed it's like one of the most popular projects on github so there's a small tangent to get off on but I think it's important to, to not you know to keep building on things and not just tear them apart because we want to be kind of better than the people who made it or something. So I think the reason I'm saying this reactivity thing is not only because it's a remarkable uh, aspect of meter, but also because these methods, the reactivity breaks down if I use a method. Methods aren't reactive data sources. So if users add into a, a new permission group, this method won't rerun. It's only run once when it's called. But if I had a publication, and you know this is where the composite publication actually would be, really good because a composite publication could start here with the permissions 
and would reactively find the groups. Where are those methods? Publications. So in this case, here's a starting at a resident, grabbing the resident document here, a couple of fields from that, checking the user permission. And then the resident has some related activities, and those activities have related activity types. This whole chain is reactive. So if this, the resident wouldn't really change, but if these activities change, then the activity types related to them would also be pulled into the client. Now on this add activity form, I don't think reactivity is paramount because you're only here temporarily. But it's just food for thought. It's like, I really would like to see a, uh, a system like this succeed, like the way Meteor was designed, <clears throat> but not have so many maybe caveats around whether or not a method was reactive, like have reactivity baked end to end. I think in another example is Vue.js and the client probably react, but I've been looking at Vue. Um, there's these caveats around the reactivity system and caveats around you know, like what's asynchronous and whatnot as well. And those can be, they basically make it a little rougher on the a learning curve and they can actually in the long run hamper what people are able to do with the platform. By putting up obstacles. So I'm not gonna go with resident composite. duplicating things a little bit here. But I'll get this code written in this publication and I'll move it to a method. since residencies are attached to homes or oh, no no yes residencies have a home ID I can get these visible residencies from this list of homes see if I need just home IDs if there's you know it's like this whole all this might as well be methods at this point I'm not really benefiting from the reactivity
shift key. Now I can use these home IDs to return the homes. And that'll terminate the publication. You know, I'm not gonna have reactivity. So, oh well. I think you can pass it an array of IDs and knows how to handle that. This is an array. I did want to check that. So this is unrecognized. That's funny. Okay, so this. We have a little bit of an error here. So I think it's because I'm passing an array of IDs. Cannot be an array. Okay. With a single string, it would work, but yeah, that's fine. I can't handle it. We have nine homes subscribed. Well, they should only have three. That's because we have two active home subscriptions. I haven't switched it out yet uh, until I reduce it down. But yeah, we'll, so in a little bit, we'll see. Oh, yeah, on this page, we only have three. Yep, that's correct. So I guess just the pattern I'll follow here now, established here, is um, do enough work to get the document IDs for the relevant collection I'm in. So there should only be like about that many lines of code. Keep these publications really thin. You know, again, I don't want to repeat this too much time, too many times. But that reactivity, I mean, I think that's such a missed opportunity that that we abandoned that as a an ecosystem of developers for like I don't know what all the reasons are behind it. But I think some of them are just misguided. So I will try not to say that again until the next live stream. I'll probably get on my tangent again. 
All right, so we've got, is there anything I can close here real quick? Yeah, this is looking good, not too bad. Still green. It's visible, oh my geez. Now for the residencies, I'm gonna do the same thing, use residency IDs. Right, and then I'll just uh, do something with that in a minute. So I need that method. You use visible residency IDs. Okay, so we're in publication, so I need to go over here to methods. Close a few things here. Methods. Residencies. Ooh, that's a bad one. Okay, that, that's a start. No, no, I just need IDs to get the residencies, yeah, so. I realize though this is also doing double duty with the on the database. Hmm. It's gonna make the same query twice in quick succession for each of these. So it's good I revise this. Okay, so that's more efficient on the database. Still not too many lines of code. Oh yes. And I like what uh, what we got over here in this pull request. I think where was that? If I review these lines of code. Shaley, really nice technique here. 
using the spread right here. So I copy this and then the spread right here. So when building the query, residency is fine. You know, home ID and then spread departed in there. Let's see all the other pastes. Hey, it didn't uh, break things too bad. So home ID here. Yep, Shaley's a new contributor to the project and helping us clean up our data model, taking some low-hanging fruit tasks. Overall, been really impressed by their sort of knowledge of JavaScript, some of the code. Yeah, keeping it readable, you know, chaining the map on the fetch and stuff like that. Uh, I'm returning these directly, so I don't need a map over these. Methods could be cleaned up a bit. I'm not sure. So, what's this? Mm, yes, yeah, defining the method. So. I think I should keep this method here because I'm using it now, right? Yeah, I need this home IDs one. I don't I don't think I should do that there because that's double duty oh, right. that's right. Let's go to the methods here yeah this is what I'm talking about so I'm creating the home to get the home IDs here what I should really be doing is Going back to this one. And maybe this is where I can take Shaley's map approach, essentially just chain it here. So let me grab this. Bring it over to his publications. Paste it here. And this is nice that it abstracts it. But it comes at the cost of doubling up the database query.
Current user visible active residencies should also now be working. So now we want to residence publication. Current user visible residence. Okay, so for <coughs> residents need to be essentially group are grouped into homes, and then homes are grouped into re, um, groups. So from here we have <laughs> it gets really difficult to reason about, but I've got several layers I need to traverse through here. So first, I get the This is RD in um, code, but oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. All right, so this last line will be what the database query I'll do in this context. These others I'll put into a method. And the method will be get user visible residencies IDs. Takes the user ID. This is a generic function. Get user visible residency IDs methods relating to residencies. Get user visible residency IDs. All right, there we go. And these would be current residencies. Get user visible current residency. And I think I said active residency. Active residency, get user visible active residency ID. So get current user groups 
I don't think I really need a method for that. Because this is just a query. Method relating to permissions. Exists. Good single user. Good single user group IDs. That's exactly it. Actually, I like the. Oh, where am I using this? This is fine. Duplicate all this code. IDs equals We're going to go with homes that are belonging to this group. All 
right. So if this is duplicated, I will find, try to find it. I, I need to get a code tool on here to scan the project for duplicate code on commit. I think code climate will do that. If I recall correctly, uh, anybody in the room have experience with any code analysis tools uh, that can be integrated with GitHub? I would like to, uh, I'd be glad to know about it, uh, what your thoughts are on that. Right now, basically when we get a, like a pull request like this one, we don't have any tools that are really scanning it. Maybe some of that code climber would be good to set up. Code climber velocity, ooh. Code climber quality, I think that's what I'm looking at. Okay, cool. How you doing, Morph, ble morph Breed? Yeah, it's kind of a, these tools are usually used when you get you know multiple collaborators and a kind of a larger project. And this, the code in this project is growing um, large enough that I'm really having struggles just remembering how things are organized, trying to reduce duplication and things like that. Um, and just reasoning about a feature like this, you know, adding user permissions and getting all these layers here, going through all the layers to get the residencies, residents. Uh, yeah, it's fatiguing. I've already had a full work day doing this stuff outside of work. Morphbreed, what kind of uh, projects are you working on? What, what languages do you use? You working on JavaScript or Python or anything else? Or are you just learning to code? Meteor JS, okay, very cool. So you came to the right channel. Yeah, I, I you know, I think that Meteor has a lot of great qualities. Uh, Certainly, the, my probably favorite part about it is the original philosophy of making uh, the developer um, work easy, you know, so you can quickly prototype something and get it up and running without having to think about configuration and, and you know, basically things just working out of the box, even installing dependencies, like it comes bundled with, you know, like Node and NPM and stuff and Mongo. Okay, so home active residency IDs. I'm thinking I had a uh, helper for this, but I'm really just tired. So I've got these home IDs and I want to do active residencies. Home ID is in. Same thing here. Yeah, there's a few things I wish that Meteor would have kept growing out. Again, I mentioned those reactive um, publications. Maybe I should get into GraphQL and things would uh, be a lot clearer for me on that. But I think MBG moved on away from the Meteor project primarily. Uh, another thing I would wish they would build out is either maybe richer MongoDB support, things for like aggregations and things, or support for other um, databases than MongoDB. But again, again, I think this is solved by GraphQL. So this should work. Now, if I get these find, fetch, what is this? It's a uh, residency IDs. And then map residency. In each of those I'll pass, I'll return, oh gosh, come on. shift key, dot underscore ID, boom. And thanks to Prettier for keeping my code nice and pretty. <clears throat> uh, Morphbreed, do you have any uh, projects on GitHub or are you mainly working on your own kind of stuff, uh, personal project or work project. Residency. So that should give me, and in fact, I instead of, I just might as well return that. Oh. 
this one I'm questionable, questionable about. If I should just, it's a little bit redundant, but what I'm after is. That, returning that, there's just enough that I do here. I don't want too many lines after the return statement, even though this is all this one concept. Okay, cool. So you're, the company you were working for that you switched to, they're, they're using Meteor or August too. That's been a while that you've been kind of learning it. Yeah, I guess that it takes a while to kind of build these projects out. I guess, you know, particularly depending on what the scope of your learning project is, it can take this one started as a learning project, in fact, and we actually, it's taken on a life of its own, and we, it's now in production. All right, started a scratching an itch. All right, so what was I doing this for? So I got the visible active residency IDs, and I think it was over here in residence. Boom. Your residence from residencies, return. So I'm in a publication. Residence. Find. So, oh, what happened there? I didn't mean that to happen. Some keyboard shortcut. I have to do these finger gymnastics. I'm, on, I'm using a Nordic keyboard, and everything is awkwardly positioned from a JavaScript developer perspective. The keys that are easy to get at, I don't ever use the Nordic vowels, but they had to move the curly braces and this, the bra brackets and the parentheses. Well, parentheses are easy to get, but curly braces and brackets just finger dancing all, all over the place. So we'll get the ID uh, is in, and the dollar sign is awkwardly positioned as well. Here to have this Alt Gur key or Alt something. In, I didn't store it as anything. Here we go. Okay, so you got the same GitHub username, residency IDs. This better work. I'm going to be really excited if it does. Current user visible residence. Oh man, that's a lot of space around us. Okay, cool. So I believe. I believe I can do this. And I believe I can do this. And I believe I can do this. And I hope things don't break too bad. Too badly. All right then. F5. No screaming at me in the console, but I'm on a different view. Already here it goes. Here's the moment of truth. Click. Okay, got some consoles screaming at me. Uh, current user visible active residencies. Residencies is not defined. All right. Residencies. Current. U oh, what's the method? Current user visible active residencies. Sub current get uh, so current user visible active residencies current user visible active residencies residencies is not defined. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm trying to spread that, but I was meaning to spread that. No need, no problem. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for the call. Morph, morph breed. You know, I want to get this. Uh, I don't know if you heard it earlier, but I have this plug in here. Twitch highlighter extension, and uh, it would let you say line 32, and then it would actually highlight line 32, just like this. I think that would be really cool, but I have, haven't got it quite configured yet, apparently. Let me look that up one more time, because it might be something I can just do. Whoa, no, down over there. Uh, let me 
break it open in another window. So VS Code, because I think it wants me to do some secret stuff. Code quality, I'll get that set up later. Twitch highlighter, there it goes. Boom. And so step one, install that. Step two, I got that. When logged in as your own account or a separate account, go here. I'm gonna do this in my super secret window. My hidden window over here. Connect with Twitch. Okay. It says authorize. I hope I can trust these people. All right, so I've got that. Save it temporarily in a safe place. Is all needed in the getting started. Go to the marketplace. Keyboard shortcut. Control command plus. Type in Twitch. Twitch highlighter channels. Save your channels in the tab. Find the nickname setting. Enter your account username. Let me do this off screen also really quick. I'll just put this black screen. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> just try this really quick. So go into the settings. Go settings. Preferences. Settings in there. I need some hold music. Some nice music to play here. Twitch highlighter. Announce bot. Channels. I got a channel set up. Okay, this may work, but um, it says I need to use a different command. It says exclamation highlight. Yeah, yeah, you're reading it. Did it work? Line 32. Okay, let me, okay, try it, try it now with the exclamation in front of it. Oh, it didn't work. This is what's confusing me. So I saved that settings up here, but I added my channels and it says go back to the settings UI tab well I hope I don't dox myself real quick but I guess they mean this the nickname Going black again. I just don't want to expose my token. Looking in the config, the text config, Twitch OAuth. This might be working. Okay. 
Okay, I pasted my OAuth code in a secret place. One more time real quickly, I'll look at it and then we I'll just continue with the coding. I don't want to get too sidetracked on this, but I think it would be really nice to include people in the coding experience. Twitch chat. I tried this Twitch chat. I think this one was a little better. So I did that. I, I sort of pasted that in there. Now if I connect to a Highlighter chat listener. Five years, okay. Starting chat listener. Now will I be able to log in? Twitch Highlighter, unable to connect. There we go. Yeah, man, that's a bummer. Just bummer. Well, if anybody in the room's got experience uh, getting this to work, I would appreciate learning about that. I'll try it again another time. I think the problem is this is wrong. Under getting started. I'll do some testing on that when nobody's when I'm when nobody's watching I guess I don't know how to do that I have to stream maybe I can stream privately okay where are we at so uh, thank you morph breed for helping me fix that bug it looks like it's not complaining at us anymore and um, even though we didn't get to use twitch hi highlighter your comments were the saving grace all right so activity types should be all of them homes now just refreshing things for good measure. Ah, so my home is, is empty. So this it can't populate. Okay, so that's the first problem. Uh, now we do have some more errors, but good. We're working up the chain here. Promise await each for each something. Exception sub current user visible residencies. Range area maximum call stack exceeded. Okay, I can tell this one's gonna be a fun one to debug. Current user visible residencies. So, residents, residents. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes, that's the problem. All right, I just one step away. So. So first I have to grab these residencies and then that was residency IDs work here, but I'm wanting resident IDs. So residency contains map residency shift key, shift key. There we go. Go away. Yeah, there we are. So from the residency, I can grab the resident ID. Then, <coughs> excuse me. Find, this is in my query. Just repeating the same pattern. The dollar sign alone doing. Oh, did I do that? <laughs> Good one. It does not do anything. 
that I'm aware of. I mean, it might do something, but... I'll copy this whole thing. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's the only place that you use it in these Mongo. It's a Mongo prefix. For the, what do they call Mongo operators? Whoa, nice. All right, so now we should have a, no errors, but certainly that maximum call stack error is very opaque. All right, let's go down here. Just, just keep that purple text on the screen. I don't want to see a bunch of, oh, ouch. Uh, let's see, what did we get? Activity types. We don't have homes. We don't have groups. We don't have residents. We have residencies. Boom, 64 of those. That's a lot, but then the dummy data is, you know, not reflecting reality. So current user visible residents. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, goodness gracious. Home residencies. Let's just take it one step at a time. I could map here and get these resident IDs, in fact. But yeah. That would just be kind of cowboy style. Let's take a look at that. All right, add activity, we'll see something good here. Now, wait a minute. Home current residence, oh my gosh, am I in the right, I'm not in the right place, am I? Current user visible residence, oh geez. <laughs> this is where I'm supposed to be editing. <laughs> Let's just debug this a little bit at a time. Okay, just the first thing is thrown. Current user visible resident ID. Current user visible residence. Current. This is missing an argument. Firstly, so that would not return anything. Then it could not return. This could not run because. That was an empty, that was nothing, in fact, I think, who knows. All right, we got something there. Current user visible resident. Still has call stack exceeded. Yet it was able to log. Oh no, this is separate. This is a new. 
Uh, exception from Crazer. This is where debugging would come in really handy. Morph breed, how do you, what, what kind of IDE do you work with? Do you, or text editor, what do you use for working with Mongo? I mean, Meteor, Meteor and Mongo. Meteor and Mongo. Ah, here we go, that's the problem. This is a database cursor. There we are. And in the code, I was expecting it to be an array of IDs. That's the daily bob. And remember to fetch there. This looks good. This is probably good now. VS Code, all right. You got any favorite extensions installed in VS Code? Like this Twitch highlighter extension? This one's a good one, I like this Git graph. It's pretty rad. It's like riding the train. What? Please don't error. And I don't see any errors. We've got no homes. So there's four roles. For some reason they're subscribed there. 64 residencies. Zero residencies. That's kind of strange. 64 residencies. Am I hallucinating? It's very possible that I'm hallucinating. 64, still there. All right, just double checked. Yeah, prettier is cool. Yeah, and I don't mind just kind of letting go of that and just accepting their preferences. Similarly, in Python, there's one called Black, and I've just been using that. I don't have to worry about should this be, should I do, you know, the dangling comma thing or single or double quotes or where should the white space go? Don't have to argue with somebody about which is superior. Okay. Residencies is working. Hurrah. So what's not working are, oh. The homes. Homes is zero. I should be seeing current user visible homes here. Right here. Sub. Let's go take a look. Publications. Current user visible homes. So we got the user ID, the user groups. Oh, right. Well, I'm not returning anything. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's right above it. I just defined it as a variable instead of returning it. All right. Good. And 
publish function return an array of non-cursors because I'm fetching in there and that's not what I wanted to do in this context. Easy enough to fix. The difference is subtle and that's one of the kind of parts of the Meteor learning curve and the Mongo learning curve. What's a cursor? Well, in general, what's a database cursor? You know, it's kind of abstract. All right, cool. So now if we go back over to our party, here we should have some home. Where are they at? Do I have to rerun this? Okay, resident sees should go away when I close that modal, I think. Yeah, this is the bakery meteor. I, I think it's only Chrome, but yeah, it might be also running for Firefox. All right, there's a roll. There's the homes. It's just really slow. What took it so long? You can't be having such slow things going on over here. Let me do a hard refresh. Am I like simulating a GSM connection? Click. I clicked it. I did. There we go. All right, so we got homes. Yep, we're working our way up. We've got 64 residencies, three homes. Now we need the residents to work, and we'll be ready to get this working in the client. Yeah, so one thing as this project has grown, I've grown that I have neglected is unit testing. We have, a, and kind of unit testing is a strange thing in Meteor land, but we have some end to end tests, and I need to basically improve the test coverage here. I think we might be hiring some freelancers to do some of this, um, some writing of the tests for us. So we can automate those as part of our CI pipeline. Yep, yeah, I think that's pretty common to not have very many tests. I don't, I don't know, I mean, I like the idea of well, test driven development seems a little bit rigorous to me, especially if we're getting started with a new project. All right, all, let's see what's up with this resident, current user visible resident, what's going on here? So, residence IDs. What is that, is that working? Empty. All right, that makes sense. Residency IDs. That's probably the so. That's empty. But at least it's an array. Residency methods. I, I think this publication is working now. I'll leave that alone. But the method is not. Takes an user ID, grabs the user groups. Group IDs. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the problem here. I'm not mapping it. So I'm getting, these are. No, wait, wait, wait. I am. This should be correct. So that's correct. Maybe this is incorrect. That's a curse. Man. Wait. No, no, no. These are documents. 
and each of those has an ID and a name and a group ID. So this is what we're after is this group ID field. We're targeting it. So by something's going on right here. Residency home ID, that's the problem. Wait a minute. No, no, no. We want that. Notice it's, oh, it is using underscore. It's just kind of not very visible there. Residencies. Fetches them. Undefined, empty array. Let's check the residencies collection. Home ID. Correct. User visible home IDs. Okay. That's the problem. It's these are documents. So my semantics are off. Semantics, semantics. Yes, I'm, in I'm expecting a uh, to have mapped these. Residency IDs, residencies find, matching parentheses, braces. Application has errors. So yeah, there's a syntax error somewhere. Line 66. Semicolon. Yep. <laughs> nice. I'm going to get that line highlighter working because you just would have. You just typed exactly what the line highlighter would have needed, and it would have just pointed, like, flashed right there. No vision. Oh, boy. We got something going. This looks a lot better now. Uh, I can fix the thing that is not rendering the thing properly. I think there might be a little bit of latency where this select widget is rendering before this is populated or some kind of because of the way this code is written on the server side, there might be some delay and these publications might be coming in late, which is another tricky thing to track down. But let me just do a hard refresh, reload, clear cache, act. 
activities. Let's check out Mini Mongo. Map is a cursor function too. Actually, yeah, good point. Let me get the docs on that. Yeah, boom, I haven't actually been using that. Returns an array. So I don't need to fetch, just the map, right? Basically what you're saying is this is redundant. Gotcha. Yeah, I like that. Cleans it up a bit. And it's pretty natural that you would want to map over a collection of uh, database results or query results. Nice. So is there any place else I did that? I can't even remember. I'll look for those types of deals and clean them up. Yeah, compatible with array map. This is why it might be worth. Again, this is a transient little widget here. Oh, and it's working. Boom. Freddy Town. <laughs> I didn't write these names. Colpinbury. Yeah, Holmes. Uh, Freddy Town, Colpinbury, and North, North Rachel Land. I mean, I don't see why it would uh, be incorrect, but I'm just going to look for Rachel. Rachel! Where are you? Oh, there you are, Rachel. All right. Cool. Man, I'm about to commit some stuff. What's the keyboard shortcut for kill the line? VS Code. Key bindings. Control Shift K. I've been hitting Control K, but that's not, of course, not it. Okay, a little bit of cleanup. And if I look at my commits here, it'll tell me why I can show me some stuff to clean. Okay, a bunch of lint. Yup. I should have committed to lint before I going into all my changes. There's a console log there. So I think that means this is reactive now, based on what you were, what I was reading and that you pointed out this map thing now. Well, the fetch would also be reactive, but if any of the, it, this map it adds, by using, instead of using the fetch and then using my own map, the map on the fetch, on the return array from fetch, by using this map, it registers a, a dependency to all the residencies here. And if any of them change for whatever reason that was relevant to this it would rerun this publication that's pretty cool a little bit mind-boggling but uh, 
it makes no change. So the cursor map and the fetch dot map are the same, basically, in this context. But I mean, in a context where the hmm. okay, well, that's cool. The equivalent. For whatever reason, I'm thinking that the fetch would be the set, and if the set of documents changes, then the map would rerun. But from the docs, it said that this is not just a set, but dependencies on the matching documents. Well, that is kind of like this set, huh? Yeah, and I don't know much about Meteor internals and you know, go to definition not working really in VS Code. I don't have some Meteor IntelliSense or something going on. Preferences, extensions, Meteor. I installed this IntelliSense package, but I think it's just not very mature. Yeah, I've got this Meteor package IntelliSense installed, Meteor snippets, and then, well, this is IntelliSense also. But for whatever reason, it's not getting me into the go-to definition. It's not getting me into the Meteor code base. Like when I did this in Django, and I'm running Django and Wagtail, another project that I'm live streaming here. Uh, when I say go-to definition on like a Django internal, uh, you know, like module, Python module, uh, it'll jump me into that code. That's pretty cool, because then I can start learning the internals of how things work. And in this case, we would know a little bit better, you know, how the how the find and map functions work. You know, that's how you learn your framework. So I would like that to work here too. What else can we do? Yeah, I know you can count them. Observe. That's pretty cool. Never worked with that. All right, let's get back to commit. In. So this one looks good. There's some interdependencies with these commits. A bunch of lint. A couple of new lines. Let me double check here. I think this logic is off. This is correct. Departed. This is not departed though. That's that's the key thing. The semantics are off. <laughs> because they haven't moved out. There's no move out date. I don't know a better word, better name for that, but there's that.
Did I merge this? Let's open it up. Make sure our code's commit, uh, consistent. We, we might be able to share code between those two functions. I don't know. Again, I'm going to enable this um, code climate on our repository, and it's going to be telling me all sorts of stuff is wrong. And I'm going to have to have myself a little cry in private, and then come back in and fix some stuff. All right. Morphbird, what kind of um, Meteor plugins do you have? Have you been digging through those at all? Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I didn't really have any strong inclination as to which one were the best, and I just kind of went with the ones that were installed the most. Yeah, some of them do the basically the same thing though, so I didn't want to install the duplicates if I could avoid it. All right, what did I do here? Some lint, 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 lint. Here's the function. Get user is one to be record. Active residency. Add get user. <laughs> Method. This is Method. It's a little bit grammatical. Homes. What I do here? No lint. A little bit of lint. No. I just changed the name. The, the method. This is a method. Should really be commented, but or quoted. Okay, so then these are commented out. So let's clean those up. Closing out all my tabs. Just everything except you. Boom! 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 Yeah, my son's been getting into Meteor. Uh, not Meteor, Mario. <laughs> He's five. He doesn't know Meteor. So that's pretty cool. I like that Nintendo does that. They they kind of keep those those vibes alive on their on their games. You know, it's like a marketing thing too because they're making money. But at the same time, I think they have like, like this this heritage they're preserving. Did I not save it? Why are, why are those? I'm confused. If I click here, there we go. I didn't. It was still showing those old ones. That was weird. All right. So what did I do? Change up subscriptions. That was a little bit of lint right there. Just remove that white space. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch these to const. That's not changing. 
that's not changing the reference const. If there's any other kind of linting things you might spot. Yeah, Sonic's cool too. And the Nintendo Switch has the Sonic games, like Sega is partnering with, with the Nintendo now. So that's cool. Bygones, I guess. Yeah, uh, my son's been watching Mario like videos on on YouTube Kids, so I'm gonna just if he, that's what he's you know interested in, I'm going with it. Dude, yeah, we just got a Switch for his birthday, and it's for both of us really. It's uh, we played together, and I'll even play in his absence, but uh, the quality is good. Um, it's the only thing that's really missing from my perspective is sort of like a way to hook it up uh, the output to a Bluetooth speaker when it's uh, Bluetooth speaker or headphones for that matter. Yeah, there has a, it's a headphone port though, and you can get a little attachment uh, that will convert the headphone port to a Bluetooth, the Bluetooth spectrum or whatever. So it's not that big a deal. But other than that, everything I've noticed about it, it's got touch screen, the controllers are, they're like little computers and you have to upgrade the software on the controllers. I mean, there's just a lot of attention to detail. They even have like, Oh, what are they called? Near field communications built into the thumbsticks, and um, yeah, I don't know. It's just really, really cool system. We got Mario Kart was our first game, and a couple out of the Nintendo eShop. All right, I'm scrolling real quick. My eyes are getting blurry, but I believe that looks good. Yeah, the little controllers are kind of, you know, they're portable, so I don't blame it, blame them for being that size. This is doing the same thing, so now this should, let me get that refresh in that view. Let's see, I should see those, did I not save it, I did not save it. Cons, 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 return, linty stuff. Mm, looks pretty good. Map. I'm not going to go over my thought process, or in other words, I'm not going to second guess myself on what I was doing here. It's working. I'll leave well, leave well enough alone. Even though there might be a more efficient or clean or proper way of doing things. All right, so replace all the subscriptions. Some lint, basically. After that, I see white space, mm, breaking things on new lines, white space, what's this one what happened here? White space. So yeah, replace subscriptions. But yeah, another cool thing, Rocket League, yeah. It's hard to hold down the right shoulder button. What is that for the accelerator or something? I guess the rock, the right shoulder button. Yeah. Now, one thing to note though is when you take the controllers off the side of the Wii Switch thing, the Nintendo Switch. Um, there's this little attachment that you should put on that has a wrist strap. And not only does that attachment keep you from throwing out your controller that went out window when you rage quit, but it makes those buttons a little more accessible because it actually makes bigger buttons on them. So that might be, I don't know if you were using that little wrist strap attachment or not, but that might have helped. We haven't tried Rocket League, so we might try it out, too. I think they had a free weekend or something to play it out. But we're really enjoying Mario Kart. And the online play is cool. Another thing is I like the... Um, ah, so, yeah. See if the... Because it comes with the Switch. And maybe your friend or whoever had bought the Switch put those aside thinking they weren't very useful or, like, they aren't going to ever throw their controller out the window or something. But that's what they're for, I think, too. Yeah, and the, uh, you know, Nintendo Switch Online, it's like, you have to pay, it's an online service, but it's like 35 bucks a year for a family of 
of uh, accounts. So I think that was a pretty good deal. I, I, comparing it to like Microsoft or online or something like that, those subscription platforms are much more. They're like thirty-five bucks a month or something. All right. So I'm looking forward to making some Nintendo Switch friends and playing some Mario Party, Mario Kart. I think they have a few games, maybe Rocket League, but League, but that might be too much like adrenaline for my blood. Splatoon, yeah, that looks pretty cool. And from what I can tell, it's kind of an all ages thing. It's I think three and up, so my son could play it. He might enjoy it. Yeah, I like that you like turn into a squid and things. And it also ties in a little bit. I don't know if this was on purpose, but you know, in, in Mario cart they have a squid attack that puts ink on all the other players maybe splatoon is sort of playing off that with their squid and octo where you where you go into the paint i don't know much about it but yeah we use pretty cool too that we had splatoon one though right and splatoon two is just for the switch i think all right so i think my pull request is ready for review User group assignment. Can I check off some boxes now? Hey, what happened to my other check marks, dude? Oh, you know what I did? I put some check boxes in the in the dang issue and some in the PR. Whereas my con friend Conrad said PRs. Ah, uh, so much to do in this, and it has been over two hours, and I am tired. It's a level just turning midnight here, and I've actually had a full day of work, and in over two hours of this, I'm beyond my capacity to continue this task today. But you can tell it's been quite epic work. I got some commits over several days, some rebasing as our master branch is proceeding with our collaborator. Collaborator. Shaley, yeah, there we are. So the project is coming along. And uh, just for what it's worth, this feature I'm building, we have a, just signed a contract with our largest client, the city of Tampere, which is where I live. And um, they are wanting to use this Jerry Life. They're using it in uh, one of their main resident campuses. Uh, and they're wanting to use it in more, like across the city, basically. And in order to do that, they're going to be adding a lot of nurses to the system and residents, like hundreds more, I think, something like 600 or I can't remember exactly, but it was quite a lot of um, activities going to be going on. And basically, we just, they said, hey, it's already, you know, it's already difficult enough for nurses to see the relevant information. I kind of said this at the beginning of the uh, live stream, uh, but nobody was here at that point. That was for the people watching on YouTube, if anyone watches Every once in a while, somebody watches that on YouTube. Uh, but in any case, so we have to, this touches at like many points of our project throughout. As you could tell just from today's session, it, it goes throughout the code, multiple layers. So I could check these off. And this does work correctly now. And I could probably reuse that same code on the add, add feeling form. I'll take a quick glimpse at it while it's fresh in my mind. If it's just a matter of swapping out these subscriptions on that actually before like copy and pasting that then boom I'll do it real quick um, uh, add feeling form yeah I'm using auto form meteor auto form I don't know if I'm using the NPM version of it or if I'm still back on the atmosphere version of it in general, I'm sort of trying to wean the project off of Meteor specific packages and maybe Meteor eventually porting it over to Django. I don't, despite what I, the things I like about Meteor, the reactivity and whatnot, um, it's just, I don't think it's long for this world to sort of, and there's some really big pieces missing, like, defining schemas that are just missing from core database migrations and when they left it all to the ecosystem and the ecosystem has essentially moved on now all these things are just atrophying including auto form i believe um, whereas 
projects like Django, maybe even Ruby on Rails for that matter, uh, they're around, they've been around for a long time, really mature, really robust, and they're not really going away. A little bit people are, some of the parts of Django, for example, are getting transitioned over to community maintenance, but a lot of that main, the core framework includes a lot of the stuff we're using. And most specifically, our data model, as you could kind of see from today's session, is quite relational. We got relationships all through here, and I'm having to basically rely, write relational logic. I would like to be using Postgres, frankly. So for that, and that's a huge undertaking. Oh, I don't know if I'll ever even start it or be successful if we do start. Uh, it'd be more of like a full-time development thing, and I'm doing this in my spare time. So really quick, let's take a quick look at the feelings. And when we add a new feeling, all current residents and all homes. <clears throat> Let me just paste these in here real quick. No, not that. What they need is current user visible residents. Instead of all current. This should really be active or something. Oh man, I hope that's what that is. In any case, now we got this subscription and uh, on the new feeling form, I think everything else should work. Uh, except this. Needs to be current user visible home. So yeah, maybe it doesn't matter. We're just swapping out these subscriptions. I can check another box. Uh, yeah, what do you think of Autoformer? Do you have any comments on what I was just saying about the media ecosystem and the atmosphere in particular? Morph breed, what's your, what's your take on all that? So we go back over here, and I think at this point, it's right here, add a feeling, select one. North Rachel, there's Rachel. There's Freddy, and there's Gulpin Brewery. I think it's good, I wanna just check. Pretty amazing at the beginning of the year, I was too, at how fast you could be productive, like in a weekend you could spin up a project I mean, this project has been under development, I think, oh, about four years now. I'd have to look into Git commits, maybe three, three, four, uh, or four years. Um, yeah, the initial prototype came up fast. Yes, that's the user login stuff is cool. Uh, you know, Django, when I built a login system for a Django app, it took me a few hours. But there were some really good guides on, you know, you have to handcraft the forms and stuff. But yeah, with Meteor, it was like, wasn't it just like one to get the, the login UI, there's like already templates ready. And then it has the whole user system baked in. Django also has a user registration user system built in though. And user based um, ro like roles and permission system out of the box, which is something that Meteor has left to the ecosystem. Never really matured, never really took off. So, so, so there's always like this, I guess, sort of debate and back and forth I've had with a couple of my colleagues also about, you know, do you use a monolithic framework that has all these batteries included or do you just want to assemble yourself? And I think that it boils down to like the argument mainly is that if you use a monolithic framework, it's hard to sw swap out the parts, which makes sense because the framework is built to have uh, with the expectation of having these parts in there. And that means that the parts can be mature and other developers can also have the expectation that those parts will be there so they can build on top of those. And when you leave it to the ecosystem, then there's not the expectation that this router is gonna be there where, you know, in Meteor we got Flow router and, uh, what's the router I'm using actually in this project? In any case, you know, so you got your ecosystem split, which router to build on and extend, and then so neither of them gets fully baked and both of them get got abandoned in fact, pretty much. So it's really frustrating. And I'm the more of the monolithic framework. I think, and you don't have to use all the parts of the framework. And if you're not using a part, it's generally not getting in your way. But it's guaranteed to be maintained. Django has like this long-term support release uh, cycle. And, that, you know, just stuff like that. I don't, I kind of miss in the Meteor and JavaScript ecosystem, I think. 
JavaScript developers kind of, we shoot ourselves in the foot chasing scalability and doing what, you know, like Facebook does. And like a project like Meteor that has the potential of being mature and easy uh, to get started, easy to scaffold the app, having batteries included, you know. Yeah, one best friend after another, yeah, I should be doing everything in React now. That's kind of what happened with Meteor is like, you know, Blaze wasn't good enough. People wanted to go React or, or Angular and replace the Blaze UI. And so Blaze got more or less deprecated or pushed out to being stewarded by the community. Yeah, it's really frustrating. And then you look at something like Ruby on Rails or Django, you know, they've been around for over a decade. Re you know, React's been around for a while. Yeah, but I'm trying to avoid it. I'm actually actively trying to avoid React. I don't know. But maybe I should just get over it. <laughs> I just don't like doing everything in JavaScript. I think JavaScript has its place, but certainly don't believe it's wise to do CSS in JavaScript. And I don't really think it's wise to do HTML in JavaScript. I think they have their place, even in you know, JSX. Um, I would like to write HTML. <laughs> yeah, so did you do your full yeah, <laughs> what was it? I was watching this uh, interview on, I can find it in my YouTube history, but uh, let me find it real quick. What's her name? I'm trying to remember the name of the... But basically, one of the points is this... Uh, so one of the, this woman who's... Uh, works for Mozilla and she's participating in the CSS development process and she has a lot of experience going uh, in web development in general and really got active in CSS uh, maybe specifically animations how do I get to my history history of my channel oh no it's probably over here on this collapsible menu CSS standardization there we go found it I haven't watched the whole thing, but I'm pretty pretty far into it. Pile of things come at all. The state of the web, Google Chrome developers, when was it published? April 3rd, so pretty fresh. Uh, Jen Simmons, and one of the comments that Jen Simmons made was that before CSS was the thing, like in the 90s, um, people were having to figure out all sorts of ways to style components, just not even components at that point, just to style their pages. And one of the ways that they were doing is inline styling by modifying HTML attributes with JavaScript. So in a way we've gone full circle to that, it's changed a bit. Um, but one of the lessons was that don't inline your styles and that it's just a really inefficient way to go. You separate concerns, and the reason the CSS language has been developed was so you could s separate out your de your styles declaratively in in one place, and you keep your styles separate from your structure, and your structure and style separate from your functional, you know, like methods and and whatnot to manipulate the DOM. And now we've got declarative DOM manipulation, even so. It's like we've definitely progressed quite a lot, but I think let's not throw out the past and I think that's what we're running the risk of doing what do we put try to do everything reinvent everything in, in JavaScript and I believe that and we also not only that but we alienate people who who are entering the sort of the developer ecosystem through web development like I didn't I didn't have a formal computer science background or anything like that I came to development and I have my job as a result of being able to just tinker around with some HTML and CSS and stuff like that. You know, they were so simple and approachable. And if you look at modern development, it's not. It's in fact, I believe, alienates people because of the complexity just to even get started on a JavaScript project. You have to pick a bundler and, a, you know, CSS pre-processing framework and uh, pick which dialect of JavaScript or ECMAScript you're going to be supporting I don't know, it's just too much front-loaded. And most of our projects don't need 
all that tooling, particularly at the start. And that's what I think back to what Meteor provides is you just start developing and you, um, Meteor kind of handled all the tooling for you almost invisibly. So that's probably the mind blowing thing that I'm coming back to. But yeah, if you want to check out this video, I'll post the link in chat. And if you got any videos that you recommend I watch, feel free to share them. And then I'll take a look at them a little bit later on. Okay, so it looks like this um, ad feeling thing just works. So that's whew, that's a relief. Yeah, cool. My pleasure. I like learning from these kind of people who've got you know really great experience in our field, and particularly who are deeply involved with this standardization project process. Because I believe web standards are really important, and that keeping the web an open platform is really important for our culture and our humanity. And I don't want the web to turn into cable TV. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I try to follow a lot of them on Twitter also. But I have a trouble with Twitter because it's just so non-sequitur, I guess. Even YouTube is pretty non-sequitur. Like, I'll watch a video, half of a video, like the one I just shared, and it gets kind of lost in this stream, and I completely forget to it. I have to go back to my history. I wish these systems could be designed so you could have a little bit more focus and follow through on what you're, what you're watching. Whereas, like, things like, you, uh, what is it, Udemy, you get a course on there, and it helps you get through that course. It says, well, there's you know, 20 more videos. Here's where you're at. Something like that. Because a lot of our learning is um, very sequential. It takes a long time. You can't condense it down to you know, five or 10 minute video. These topics, there's quite a lot to them, a lot of breadth and depth. Home report page should show not authorized when user visits without proper group membership. Can check a couple of these real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead. What co what courses have you bought on Udemy? What topics are you interested in? All right, so I'm just checking in another window. Um, what I'm gonna do is run a quick experiment. So. This user should only have access to, there's this, this home report page and it needs some improvement, but um, essentially it shows you all the activities for the home. <laughs> I'll come back to that, that was a little bit embarrassing. Plus it's mock data. So I'm, in this new window, I'm opening up the home report page for a different home, in a home that this resident, this, this user should not be able to see. And they can see it. Okay. So. And this is actually not relevant anymore. all to the task all right cool uh, activities form should show only activities from correct residence activities form I think I might page Cool. So there's a little bit of work to do. This residence page should show only user visible residence. This might be a trivial one to check off. So basically, we're going to 
this is a cross cutting concern. This is touching like almost every view in our project. So yeah, um, this activities page is basically not working. Oh, there it goes. It was just a little bit slow. So we're showing 3,500 pages of 10 activities, ton of activities in this uh, dummy data. And this is no, not much different than actually the production system because it's just uh, hundreds of residents which are each having at least one activity a day, you know, in this actual real world deployment. So this grows quick. Uh, but the thing is, this user should only see activities from the residents who are part of the homes which are part of the groups to which they've been this assigned so a little bit of depth there a couple of layers oh you see most of them are about game development hey game development what do you think of the godot engine have you been checking that out Yeah, cool. I'm actually pretty interested in it. I can't find a really kind of enough time, I guess, to really f focus on it. But I, I did kick kickstart a little, couple little game ideas, and I have this one kicking around in my head. I like really like city building games and sort of transport planning games, sort of simulation along that scale. And so I've been playing um, City Skylines. Transport Fever, Cities in Motion, and uh, for a long time I was playing Open TTD, Open Transport Tycoon Deluxe. And it would be really cool if there was a Godot game that give you 3D sort of city simulation. And I know there are several city simulation games out there in the open source community. In fact, I was reading about one today that's been under development in Rust. Uh, for a while, and it's looking really nice. Rust and uh, WebGL runs right in the browser. Um, but I'd like to see one that come out of the Godot ecosystem. Yeah, and I I actually bought that Udemy Godot course. Those uh, people who made that course, they they do pretty good work. I'm trying to remember their name real quick. Let me find it real quick. Yeah, I don't want to be like a sort of selling stuff on my feed but I just want to find the name of this my courses I'm not selling anything here I don't have any affiliate links anything but uh, Ben Tristan Game Dev TV I like their teaching style they're, it's really accessible they're really kind of friendly and they're porting the whole thing they're updating it for Godot 3.1 which was the new release and another thing, uh, what was that Godot Kickstarter? I just got funded like create your own games with Godot. Discovering Godot. Create your own games with Godot. This thing got funded for like 25,000, well, 32,000 euros. I'm going to put this up and over here just because this is a really good cause. Create your own games with Godot, the free game engine. This has already passed, but they got 32,000 euros. I chipped in like, what? Something. 25 or something. Uh, and most of what they're doing, it's DRM free. They're doing free tutorials on YouTube, tons of them. Uh, the games that they're making as part of these courses are open source. And I mean, this was really, these, this is such a cool initiative. They're bringing Godot to a new level just of accessibility. And they're even contributing this. One of the stretch goals was to write to improve the docs, the Godot docs. So you got 2D game three, creation, 3D, open source from the start. They make an RPG, a 3D game that's open source. Where were their stretch goals? Learning path, 20,000. So they got basically all of their stretch goals met. And the three, new and 3.1 course introduces all the new features, so boom. And this learning path is the open source one, like openly licensed. Yeah, so that's rocking.
Yeah, this graphic here, or yeah. Um, they're in the early, so it got funded like a month ago. When did it get, when did it hit it? It closed. Huh, does it say over here? Did you see that? Updates. Campaign is over February 8th. So they haven't released any updates, but if you check out their YouTube channel, oh, that's the wrong back button. Uh, check out the YouTube channel, which is linked they'll have a lot more updates and most of their stuff is anyway these free tutorials that they do here they have a link over here i think scrolling kind of fast sorry if it's nauseating but here we go i think this is their U gd quest this is their youtube channel Hey, welcome to game design quest or GD quest in short. We are here to help you become <laughs> Really good stuff. All right, I'll try not to do that again Yep, and just here's what it's worth while we're on the topic. This, this, uh, uh, I have to be signed in. That's weird. Oh, because I'm. Where's just the course page? Discovering Godot. Yeah, this game dev TV. Man, Udemy has constantly. 90% off sales like all the time. I don't think I've, I've logged in one time where it hasn't had like some 90% off something. All right. I'll just send it in the link to the GD Quest channel if you want to keep up to date as they release the U the um, learning materials and such. Okay, yeah, there's been a nice tangent though. That I think there's some really cool stuff in Godot, and from what I'm starting to understand, game development is like really rich and quite uh, quite different than what I've encountered in, in web development. Like the, you just have to think on it a whole different level. So I'd like to get more into that. And I think my son might be interested in that eventually. We're learning a little bit about code. We're like doing code.org. But you know, if, he, if that's not his thing, that's all right. But he's already interested in games. Like I think that's pretty easy for a kid to get drawn to. All right, let me just run through a couple more of these to see if there's something in the next 15 minutes I can tick off. Check off this box. Activities page should show only activities from user visible residents. I believe this one's going to be non-trivial. Let's go take a quick look. Activities form, manage, activities HTML. Let me just go straight to JavaScript. So all activity types, all residents, all homes. Well. Be easy just to swap out those subscriptions again. Okay, something's broke. Right, because it's showing all activities. So it is working correctly that it's filtering the residents, but then I need user visible activities. So, oh boy. Where do I even get these activities from? It's from a reactive table. All right, look at this. 
table of settings. So these just show different ways of rendering the table. Where does the table get its data from though? Hmm. This is weird. Server publications. activities so yeah this just returns the collection I'm gonna to have to look at this reactive table publication method to see how to return a set of filtered activities Did I have a helper? Do you remember if I had a uh, helper for user visible resident IDs? Method for that, residents. Yeah, that's, since I'm only dealing with residents here, the only query here, I can move this into a method. This is the wrong file. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. No, it's not. Wait. Resident methods. change here. Oh yeah. Constants. What this is going to do is give me the uh, resin IDs. them. If 
find activities where user ID is in Yeah, that, that robot face looks kind of like, kind of reminds me of the Godot robot. Oh, it's not working anymore. Nice. Yeah, I'm not sure that this, if it just needs a collection, what is this? Reactive table, table, meteor reactive table. I'm suspect, starting to suspect I'll have to rewrite this pagination a little bit, still more manually, but uh, when was this last updated? Oh, that doesn't quite work, but... Uh, 2018, March 31st, 2018. Uh, publish, publish, publish. Insecure items. This looks for a property on the item, but I actually need to. Like, is this a Mongo? Huh. Let me think here. Because I can move this all out. Selector. Name. Yeah, so we have name, collection, selector, settings. Yeah, that's cool. So I just can't apparently. So this function returns the selector. Okay. That's cool. I can fix that. So instead of actually trying to do it here, I just need to return this. And I think that I didn't need that anymore. Second argument now becomes activities. Uh, and it shouldn't return anything in that second case. If there's no user ID, let's see if that breaks things. Matching braces, no. Damn it. Dang it. Ah. Let's see. Yeah, this should just be. Maybe I lost a matching brace up here. So, where's this? Right there. There, there we go. This is looking good. No collection to publish. Activities.
Oh. No, no, that's correct. Yeah, so we got those back. I just want to check the one off there. So you have the name. I'm not changing anything there. The second argument is the collection. A function that returns a collection to publish or just the collection if it's insecure. Selector optional, a function that returns a Mongo selector that will limit the results published or just the selector. These are positional arguments. React table publish, React table will publish, publication name, collection, function. They return to selector. I'll just double check that the activity schema has a user ID. Oh, oh, oh. Resident ID. Yeah, that's the problem. All right. Reading a little closer. Yeah, and this now is resident ID in. All right, that looks good. I believe that will just work. I might have to refresh this. Oh, okay. No, th no, this is a different deal, actually. Let's go to the schema. I, don't know, I know why this is not working. But I don't quite know the solution. But essentially, when I look at the, uh, the activities collection, it has... Schema has residents IDs because multiple residents can participate in the same activity. So first I've got the wrong field. So let's fix that. The second thing is how do you query a Mongo array field is just this. Did it work? Yeah. Oh, 1586. And what was that before if I just return just an empty object? 1586. And now it is 3511. Oh, so good. I like when things work. I'm gonna leave this with naming selector because it's not obvious. Or I could add a comment. are working or I can just look at a specific resident and specific activity type clear the filters seems to be working let's see outdoor activities 262 pages 
Agnes, 10 pages. Agnes, art, 3 pages. Agnes likes to do art. Dude. Check the box, man. Commit it. So this is a bunch of lint. Which is pretty cool that it just cleans it up as I go along. The main thing here happened was that swapped out. There's three of them that I did this swap. What's this? Just swap out uh, the subscriptions in Lint. This is all Lint. This one's a little different. I'll come back and I'll commit this in a second. Not sure exactly what I did here. Or if this is lint also. I think I added a function at the bottom. This one here. This is another one that I mainly rewrote, so I will not include it in this commit. This I moved it to a helper. Got moved to the get visible active resident IDs helper. I believe all this is just land. Two characters over. And this actually should be, now that I look at it, I'm going to close down a bunch of stuff here. I'm just going to close it all and open it. I'm going to rename this publication now. Oh, I don't know if I should do that. I'll just leave it alone because I'm not sure where I subscribe to this. But this should be all visible activities. in the HTML template, so to speak. All right, there we go. Check the box before, and yeah, I will move it out of to do into done. Okay, with that, it's been three hours, seven minutes. I think I'm. I really gotta call this one. Uh, it's almost one a.m. here. Doing good though, really whittling this down I might actually you know I might find a couple more to do items when we test it out and review it 
Uh, but I think I can probably finish this out in the next session. Um, I'm not sure. I don't really have any formal plan or schedule around these code sessions. I just try to do things on evenings and weekends in my free time. So might have a session tomorrow if you're interested in hanging out again. And Morph Breed has been really cool chatting. We've had uh, talked about some interesting stuff. And maybe I'll, I'll hope to see you around in the chat again. Uh, just give me a holler if you're there. I can't really see who's who's in the room until somebody chats. At least I don't know how to show the chat participants. But in any case, uh, thanks to everybody who's stopped in, who's watching now, or if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, on the YouTube, feel free to leave a comment or you know suggestion, uh, any kind of things relating to the project or any of the topics we've touched base on today. And uh, hope to see you all around. And again, see you later, Morph Breed. Have a good uh, day or evening, depending on where you're at.